Allen, Texas now joins the long list of U.S. cities and towns traumatized by a gunman bent on killing as many people as quickly as possible. So far this year, at least 201 mass shootings have devastated people in this country, nine of them since Friday. That's according to the Gun Violence Archive. Our next guest knows the tragedy of these events all too well. He lost his daughter in the 2018 Parkland School shooting. Fred Gutenberg, who's been on this program many times, is here in person. Thank you so much for being with us. It's uh, such a privilege to have you here. Uh, you wrote this book, yeah. American Carnage, Shattering the Myths that Fuel Gun Violence on uh, the Mass Shooting Epidemic in this country. I started going through it uh, today. It's, it's a great read. Um, can't you. wait to finish it. A lot of important information in there. But what is your response to this latest massacre in Allen, Texas? Uh, killed eight people, and they were just out at a shopping mall uh, on a Saturday. You know, I'm going to pick up with a prior guest who talked about comments from Ken Paxton um, saying we just need more security guards and that kind of thing. And it looks like the shooter was actually a trained security guard. Um, stop listening to the liars. For far too many years, we've listened to people like Ken Paxton who have said more guns solve problems. It was a lie. They conned America. It's not true. And Listen, my daughter would be 20 years old in July. So I'm looking right now at this problem in the context of her 20-year life. And I just want to go back 20 years. 20 years ago, we had 200 million weapons in America. We now have over 400 million plus ghost guns. So we've more than doubled. And 20 years ago, AR-15 sales were less than 2% of all guns sold. They are now 25%. Stop listening to the liars because everything you need to know to understand gun violence is what I just told you. The question is, how did we get here? And it's through all the lies, all the myths, all the BS slogans that we listen to the lobby and their enabled legislators like Ken Paxton tell us that have made Texas now ground zero for this violence. You know, yeah, we you covered it in the last two weekends. Last, <sighs> last weekend was Cleveland, Texas, five killed there this weekend. Um, it's Allen, Texas. And let's listen to what this te uh, Texas lawmaker said yesterday, because I think it gets to one of the other sure. uh, topics you want to get into. Let's listen to this. Really, I would like to stay away from the politics today because I want to focus on the victims. Uh, today, we should be focused on the families. Uh, prayer is powerful in the lives of those people that are devastated. I know people want to make this political, but prayers are important. So that was a congressman in that area who was on with my uh, colleague, uh, Paula Reed. And, you know, he was essentially saying what we hear a lot of times after these events, and that is thoughts and prayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am a victim. I am a survivor. My daughter is a victim of gun violence. The second it happens is the time to fight this. Before it happens, during and after. Enough of people thinking we can wish this away, we can think it away, we can pray it away. We have 400 million guns in America. We've doubled, more than doubled our arsenal in less than 20 years without any regard for public safety in public and private places. Don't listen to people like him. Listen to those whose only incentive is to stop the next one. That's people like me. And I have to ask you about this. Texas officials once again have been slow to inform the public on not just the number of uh, the fatalities, um, mm -hmm. But also information about the gunman. We have to we have to go through sources and that sort of thing. This happened during Uvalde, uh, where Texas officials were slow to get, uh, provide information. What, any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, because what's going on? Because it would force people to look at policy in Texas. Okay, they did the same thing last week um, after the mass shooting, and they said. Oh, because the guy was, you know, they, they wanted to focus on illegal immigration. But they never once asked the question, if in fact that was a factor, how did he get the gun? How did he get the AR-15? It's the only question that mattered last week. It's the only one they didn't ask or answer. And they're pulling it again. And you know what? All I can tell you is this. I am so hopeful and optimistic because we have an election coming up in 24. 80% of America says they want this problem solved. And if that 80% of America shows up and votes, and I think they're going to, because they're, it's, this, this is resonating, we're going to solve this. People like Senator Cruz, who also, one of the liars, okay, 
He should get ready to pack. He's got a great challenger in Colin Allred, and I think Colin Allred will be the next senator of Texas, and that's how we fix it. Let me, let me ask you about your book, because I think you were telling me just before the break, you provided a copy to each member of Congress up on... Yeah, oh, you're week. about to, you're going to, okay. <laughs> I, I hope I didn't ruin any surprises that's there. That's all right. Your book talks about shattering some of the myths yeah. uh, when it comes to mass shootings and gun violence. Is there a myth that stands out that frustrates you the most? You know, the very first myth we tackle in the book is who we are as a country. And we as a country, for our history, this isn't the way we've been. For the majority of our history, we've actually been a gun safety country. We've been a country that has recognized the right to gun ownership, but also the need for laws to protect public safety. That changed in 77 when the NRA was taken over by this Harlan Carter guy and really hit its, its peak in the late 90s and the early 2000s, and we've now seen the consequences of it. But we're a country that has respected the rights of gun owners, firearms owners, but also acknowledged the need for safety. And, and so the first myth that really drives me crazy is the idea that you, if you want to reduce gun violence, you're anti-gun, okay? Because it's not true. And, and so that's number one. I don't, I'm not anti-gun. I respect gun owners. I have gun owners in my family. I want to reduce gun violence. I hate gun violence. The, the other one that drives me crazy because it's personal when it comes to schools. After Sandy Hook, the NRA said for the very first time, this is not like it's been a part of our history for a long time. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. They said that after Sandy Hook, about four or five days after. They turned Sandy Hook into a gun sales bonanza. That's what they did. And so it, because my daughter was killed five years later in a school from an AR-15, again, it really upsets me. But we put all the facts there. Everything is well researched and resourced. The bottom line is all of their slogans, all of their lies, all of their myths. Stop listening to the liars and make sure you vote in 24. All right, Fred Gutenberg. Thanks for bringing us some truth. Appreciate it. And Thank you, my friend. And all the best to you and your family. I appreciate Always it. Always thinking about Jamie. And